everyone, and welcome back to Water Cooler TV. This week, we have Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher Slade Sacconi. Yeah, what's up, guys? So, once again, we always ask people this. So, were you always interested in baseball, or was there a different sport that you wanted to play? Yeah, I play, I play baseball since I was like five or six in T-ball. I played football growing up, too, but I, I just always enjoyed baseball more. I mean, were you pressured into playing baseball? I mean, my dad played football and baseball. So that's those are the two sports that I played. He also played soccer. My brother played soccer. But uh, I wasn't definitely wasn't pressured. Like when I told him I wanted to stop playing football, he didn't. He, he played football in college and he, he didn't care. He just so he was like, all right, we'll just stick to baseball. then. Did you always play pitcher or like did you want to play a different position like shortstop or third base? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played multiple different positions growing up. I mean, I always pitched, but I also played like pretty much just everywhere in the infield first second short and third so um but i settled at third base mostly up until my sophomore junior then i moved to first just to save my arm for pitching and then after that i i mean i hit all right in high school but once guy started throwing 90 plus it was game over i am I'm, I'm not built for that i'm built to throw that and i hit that okay, so you were able to go to mlb out of high school what Why'd you decide to go to college, Trace? I committed to Miami super early. My family's from Miami. I always knew that I wanted to be down there and have the college and college baseball experience. And so I valued that really high out of high school. And that's why I ended up not signing. You went there for two years. Why'd you go for two years? Well, I was a draft eligible sophomore. So I was able to leave a year early. And after really this all the COVID stuff happened as well as basically a full season and a half. I felt like I was ready to start my professional career. The next question is, what was it like hearing your name during the draft? But I kind of want to ask, what was the draft process like? Yeah. Like take us through it. So it was a lot different than in high school. Um, In high school, there were like in-person meetings with scouts and with other executives and stuff throwing like bullpens in front of them and things like that. This year it was a lot different, um, obviously due to circumstances. So it was a lot of Zoom meetings, um, a lot of video being taken and sent out just uh, through like the portal that we all had to kind of share our information. And I feel like it went a lot smoother than I was expecting. I thought I was going to with everyone learning Zoom and stuff, it'd be a lot more difficult, but it went about as well. I mean, it was basically just meetings like it would normally be. The only thing was there weren't as many pre-draft workouts and stuff, but um, draft day and draft night is, oof, I won't forget that anytime soon. That's for sure. Hearing my name called, I might have just like dropped. I don't really know. Everything else kind of just went quiet. I knew everyone was cheering and stuff and making noise, but I just couldn't hear anything. I was just, my head was just down. I was kind of in shock. I feel like it doesn't have the same effect when you know, like, you're going to get drafted. I, so, I, I, I feel that. Before they say your name, like, with Arizona Diamondbacks, do they, like, call you first and say, hey, we're picking you? There are a lot of phone calls made um, during the draft. So it's just a lot of people going back and forth, making people making decisions, obviously. So it's – the cameras don't show – like, they show, like, the reaction stuff, but they don't show the – 30 minutes before that. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I think your dog was the most excited. Yeah, I saw the videos after. He was jumping <laughs> couch to couch, up and down. He didn't know what was going on, but he was cheering. He was excited. As a rookie, he is mostly attention on you. We're going to have different coaches at the minor league level. So there's a lot of individual coaching done from each level. You learn something as you go between the coaches on a personal level. But at this, I mean, you're still playing for a team and stuff, and everyone's – at the end of the day, I mean, you're playing with each other, but also against each other at the same time. So I haven't gotten in that environment yet, but I'm interested to see what it's going to be like. Why wouldn't they just then have the good guys on the team go to the minor league and just win them the championship? I mean, I'm speaking off of like just what I believe or what I, I haven't had any experience yet because this is my first year, but I feel like, and I've seen in the past that the minor league system's more focused on development to the major leagues and less about winning and who has the best team so they try to take you through it at your own pace based off you know age ability workload like I'll be throwing more innings this year than ever that's for sure just trying to get my workload up as a starting pitcher so that's more it's more focused on development than I guess winning but I mean obviously you still want to win so 
on your contract, does it say when you're going to get a chance in the pros? It does not. Basically, there's a certain number of years where you're under contract with the team, and it doesn't say at what level you're under contract at that point. It just states that it's within the organization. So there's not like a due date, if that makes sense, of when I'll be making my debut. What's going to be going through your head when you're in that debut? Uh, I'll probably just try to keep it normal. You know, I same go through the same process, same routine that I usually would try not to make it any bigger than it is, even though it is bigger. <laughs> I hear you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Um, <laughs> so what's just your batting percentage? Okay, um, right, here we go. I haven't, so we'll start in the minor leagues, we start hitting in double A again. So there's a DH through single A, all of single A, and then double A is when you start hitting again. So I... I'm definitely going to need to start picking up a bat again sometime soon based off of them not doing the universal DH because it's been since high school now, but here's, here's the catch in high school. I hit like 380 with six home runs my senior year. So I, 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 I'm not that bad, but I just, I just, I'm going to need to crank that machine up as bad as high as it goes velocity wise, just get used to seeing what some of these guys throw. Yeah. But I feel like if you can throw it, you should be able to hit it. Well, listen, it's hard to focus on both. Based on like rosters and recent off season, what two teams do you think will make it to the World Series? That's oof, that's tough this early. I'll give you a range of teams that I think could definitely make it. I'm going to say Diamondbacks, obviously, go Diamondbacks, baby. But other than that, um, I think both the Padres and the Dodgers in our division, of course, are super teams now with the, with the trades they made. I think that the Mets, if they, they're apparently like, it looks like they're going to maybe get Trevor Bauer. If they get Bauer, they're going to have one of the best starting rotations in the history of MLB with him. Uh, Syndergaard coming back midway through the season. They already have DeGrom. They got uh, Stroman coming back. This, it's, it's unreal. They just got Carrasco from Cleveland with Lindor. So they're going to be a powerhouse. So I'd say those are the top three teams that I see make it to the World Series. See, I'm happy this year. Like, New York is finally getting some good teams. You know, are you a Mets fan or a Yankees fan? I'm not. Yankee fan. Mets, oh, Yankees. we got a Yankee. Oh, Yankees are going to be good. They're good every year, though. There's nothing new there. Um, but I think if the Mets get Bauer, they're, they they got to go to the World Series. I think they got basically – five number one starters on one roster. It's ridiculous. I didn't yeah. even take that into account. I was just thinking, okay, they have Thor. They got some other – they got DeGrom and a couple of Schmoes. I forgot about Strowman. So, yeah, because Strowman didn't play this season. I just Did really found out today that Trevor Bauer and the Mets are really close. Yeah. I saw that too, and I was like, geez. I'm kind of happy because now New York teams are starting to get good. The Nets are good now. Um, now we'll get the Mets to be good. Yankees are okay. Um, Jets look like they're going to be good now. The Jet depends on who you guys get in the draft. If you guys, can you imagine if we if we end up getting Deshaun Watson? I I, I was thinking Smith. about that though. You might not need to take a quarterback at second. We're gonna take Devontae Smith. Hmm? No, no, you should guys need that for the Giants. <laughs> you think you think the Jets would go for Devonta Smith? I do. If they get Deshaun Watson, then they just need a receiver. Fair enough. I mean, I just oof. I feel like it's hard passing up the Suell or whatever it is the, the number one lineman. But because the offensive line is awful. Everything is awful. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, I'm a Dolphins fan, so it finally feels good to feel like we have hope. It's been a while since we felt that as a Dolph- as, as an organization. Hope. Um, I think it's been longer with the Jets, <laughs> but okay. You guys are in the same division. You face the same troubles. I know. I have not that the Patriots aren't good anymore. We got a super team with the Bills. So we just went from one team dominating the division to another. You guys you guys messed up the tank, too. You were supposed to just not win a game and get Trevor Lawrence, and you couldn't even get that right. I know. That was exactly. Exactly. Jaguars. You, if you ask us to accomplish something, we can't do it. We know. So we'll go into, like, rapid-fire questions now, which is the new right. thing that we started at. Um, growing up, what was your favorite baseball team? <laughs> baseball team, Marlins. Favorite genre of music? See, for a while, it, it's been rap. But I'm, start, I'm starting to go more towards country now. I don't know. 
I go back and forth a lot. Because in Miami, nobody listened to country music. So in high school, I listened to it and I stopped listening to it down there. Now that I've been home for a while, I've started to listen to it a lot again. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> what is your um what is your favorite board game? Monopoly. What's your favorite snack? And if you say cheese it's oh. <laughs> you know, it's a little specific. It's the Snyder's honey mustard and onion little pretzel bites. Do you know what I'm talking about? I feel like I do. I do. The honey mustard there every gas station you go to, and they're so good. I hate to tell you this, but I dislike them by a lot. Really? They got other flavors, but that's my favorite flavor. After baseball, what's your favorite sport? Football. Definitely football. Do you like basketball at all? Yeah, I mean, I like basketball. I don't like watching basketball that much, but I like playing pickup and stuff like that and just shooting around. See, that's, that's me with baseball. It's very, like, full of people sport. It's fair enough. It's like, <laughs> I think it, it's starting to change a little bit more. Like, players are starting to just get a little bit more, like, excited about it. It's not as, like, traditional and boring. To yeah, watch. I feel like within the next 10 years, like, baseball won't be the sport that brings in the most money anymore. I can see that. It might be. It's just, it's such a long season. It's hard not to be the number one. Why are you still doing classes? That's my right. question. You're, you, you, wait, wait, wait. No. You're now, you, you signed like a $3 million sign bonus. You're in the MLB and you decide to continue taking classes. Let's hear this. I'm not taking classes right now. I took classes last semester just because I could remotely. And I still want to get my degree. Just kind of like an accomplishment. And if I end up using it, I do. If I don't, I don't. But I mean, I still want to graduate and feel cool. Have it in my back pocket too if I ever need it. You you can always go back to college also. Yeah, exactly. I know I can't say like, what team would you have preferred to be drafted to? I can't say that, but... I know what you mean. Yeah, but what I can say is, out of all the states that you would rather be living in, is Arizona the one that you think you're choosing? (laughs) 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 <laughs> I mean, going through the draft process, I learned a lot about a lot of teams and what they had to offer in terms of facilities, organization, technology that they have, coachings. And one easily one of the top ones was Arizona. I mean, they have one of the best training facilities ever. It's in Scottsdale, right next to Phoenix, like 20-minute drive from the training facility to the stadium. See, hockey is the sport that I know nothing about. Same. Yeah. If a hockey game's on, I'll enjoy watching it. But I just never – I've never watched a hockey game in person. I actually won. There was like a Solar Bears game that I went to because my buddy got free tickets. That was it. Like the only player that I actually know, though, is like Henrik Lundqvist. But that's because I'm from New York. See, in Florida, we also don't have as much uh, you know, as much uh, hockey influence. We don't get too much snow yeah. here. I'm from New York. I've never skied. I've never snowed. I have zero interest in it. <laughs> Yeah, but if you wanted to, you could go to a frozen lake right now and put on your boots. No, I can't. I'm in Miami right now. <laughs> oh, wait, you're in Miami right now? I'm, I'm in New York. We moved. You, okay, Alan can. What so, grade are you? Me, I am in 11 slash 12. It's weird. Yeah, I'm technically like a junior, but not really right now. So I'm <laughs> 30 and still be a junior. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Slade, for your time. Yeah, no um, Follow the Instagram at TV. We will see you next time.